Papa Sammy here. This morning, I'm going to plant. I'm going to put peppers, tomatoes, and squash in the ground today. I've got three, three different kinds of peppers. I got banana, sweet banana, and nacho peppers, jalapenos, the mild ones, and tomatoes, and uh, squash. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how I do this. It's not complicated, it just takes a little time. All right, the first thing I do, like right here, I go down in my worm bin, and I'll get me a, just a handful of uh, vermicompost, worm poop. Drop it in the bucket. Now, Epsom salt, magnesium, you got a plant that's going yellow, a little kind of droopy. Sometimes magnesium will bring it back, Epsom salt. And I don't put much, look. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is go out, fill this bucket about half full of water, come back and pour water in here, in here, and set these down in the bucket and let them soak. Uh, maybe an hour while I prep the garden out there. In the meanwhile, they're soaking up the worm poop and the magnesium and they're getting well watered before they go in the ground. Like I said, brought about half full of water with the worm poop, it looks like mud, which basically it is. <laughs> then I'm going to put water in here and let these soak. Water in this little container, let them soak. Then I'm going to submerge these back into what's left in here and let that soak. They'll soak, oh, I'm guessing maybe an hour, but it won't hurt them. I, I just noticed that one of these pepper plants has a little problem here on their leaves. Uh, I'll take a little, when I get them in the ground in a little while, I'll do a light mixture of baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, very, very, very light, and just kind of sprinkle them. Or I might wait to save you late to do that, because I don't want to burn them. And that'll knock that brown spots out, I hope. If we don't, we'll try something else. During the course of doing my beehives and recording, I know because I've had people ask, what's in the black bags? That's leaves. They've been in there, oh Lord, th almost three months now. They're fixing to go right over Yana to where I'm gonna plant. And after I plant, this is gonna be my compost. Now what you're looking at here, the common name is all I know is dollar weeds. They grow in low places where it's damp, a lot of compost. That's their roots. But they don't grow out in the yard unless there's a wet spot that stays wet. So what you do is, and I'm fixing to do now, come in with the big rake and just rake. Cause see the compost? That's all composted down in there. And cardboard left over. And that's what I do, people. I compost them and leave them alone. When I need them, I use them. When I don't, I just let them alone. I'm fixing to use this one. Kind of hard to show and tell when you've got this much going on in this in this area. But what I do is, now that I'm going to use this bed, these dollar weeds, look, they come right up. And I usually leave the green in there. It's not that much. That little bit won't hurt the plants. But this is all compost down in here. Old cardboard from last year. Uh, and when I get all this raked out, cleaned up, I'm going to put my leaves in here. All in here. Then I'm going to plant my plants. So I'm going to turn the video off right now. Use my rake and my weed eater to go ahead and get this beat down and cleaned up. And I'll be right back. Uh, there's no need recording all this. It's just not necessary. <clears throat> one of the plants growing in here with the dollar weeds is this plant I'm not, not, I'm not sure what the name is my mom and them call it pepper grass it grows wild in Louisiana the little seeds you take them off you can use them green or you can dry them they would use this to season their beans and gumbo and stuff. 
It's a real mild, mild, peppery taste, but a real unusual taste. Really good. Now I'm going to show you what these dollar weeds do. And the reason I don't take them out of my garden, see that out there, the white? That's all their roots. Let me show you something. You see this? Look. Look at that compost. Look at it. But look at the roots. The roots are shallow. Look. And what they do is, they absolutely break up uh, pine cones. You shake them. Look, look at that. So I leave these roots in here on purpose. I really do. Because they digging into the ground. And that's it. Look at that compost come up with them. Look. You shake that compost back out. Look at the roots. You just take them out of here. You're not going to get all of them. And some of them are going to grow back. But it won't be enough to hurt. Now, I mean, by the time these plants get grown, this won't hurt. This is, and this is why I'm doing this right now. That's how I do it, people. This compost has been in here, and I should have been showing you the worms. I pull this up. This here is usually full of worms. But uh, it's simple. Compost, cardboard, and when it's not in use, let it alone. Well, I can look at that little toad frog. See him? Go ahead, buddy. You stay right there. They are the best slug killers in the world, people. Bar none. Now there is another reason I keep the dollar tree, the dollar weeds. You see those worms? I've been turning them over like crazy. But if I took and videoed everything I turned over in here, we'd be here the rest of the day. And it's getting hot, people. So I'm fixing to put these plants in the ground. All right, that took about 20 minutes. You can see all the roots that come out of there. The people, they're shallow. Just reach down and grab a handful of that compost and roll it back. These roots come out. But they had eaten through the hearts of pine cones. It's hard to believe. But what's left in here now? Look. That's what's left in here now. All right. And worms, you won't believe. Now, there's one thing. The worms in here are, well, a few red wigglers, but not many because I didn't keep it moist enough. But the worms in there are night crawlers, native night crawlers. I go back around the river down there in the areas where it's damp under them big oak trees, live oaks, and start digging the compost back, the leaves, and you can pick up night crawlers by the handfuls. And that's what I throw in my gardens. Because they'll go deep. They'll go down sometimes six or eight foot. You're opening that ground up. And I built on clay right here. Solid clay. It's pretty tough. Okay. Here's my leaves spread out. They're pretty, pretty thick, if you'll notice. They're really thick. They're about four or five inches thick. All right, the reason being for this, the uh, dollar weed choked out all the grass, okay? I don't even have cardboard on this one. The grass is dead. The dollar weeds are out. Are stunned. They're not out. So, now, what's going to happen by the time these plants get to producing, the grass and dollar weeds might be coming back. But it's going to take them a while to grow through this, people. If you'll notice. In places, just the leaves are long. It's five, six inches thick. Now, what I did was, I soaked the ground. See how wet it is? Now I wet some of the leaves. I'm growing them around, cleaning up. And this is what I tell people. You don't have to spend your life out here pulling weeds. You, you can have a beautiful garden and never pull a leaf, a weed. If I happen to come out here and see a piece of grass or a weed growing up through that, hey, more compost. That's all you got to do, more compost. Now I'm fixing a plant and I'll show you the end results. Now, quick rundown, it's finished. You'll notice the plants are in there with the leaves on them. And what I did, y'all saw me, I started off, I took 
and pull out all the dollar weeds. The dollar weeds have smothered out the grass. So I'm not worried about grass in here. It's dead. All right? And I pulled those uh, dollar weeds out. Actually, I weed eat it, chewed them up, and just pulled the roots out and left the little green stuff in the garden. It was not enough to burn the plants. And what it will do over a period of time, time goes right on there with it. Anyway, once I got the, the uh, roots out, I came back, I wet the ground good, soaked it. Then I put the bags of leaves. You see them, the fresh leaves in there. And as I put them in, I soaked them. As I put them in, I soaked them. All right, now I'm soaking again. And each one of those plants, while I was doing the prep work, was in a bucket with a couple of handfuls of worm poop and a very small amount of uh, Epsom salt, uh, magnesium sulfide, sulfate. And the reason being, some of them looked a little pale. That, that magnesium will bring them back to green. Now, what you see right there is, in three or four months, weeks, six weeks, whatever, the dollar weeds will kind of come back because you're not going to get all them roots. <laughs> With the grass, it'll be a long time coming back. But if, if I do see grass coming through, more compost. By that time, those plants will be so big it won't make any difference. Like and subscribe. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to put all these roots that I pulled out of there over there in my compost barrel. But tomorrow, next year, next month, whatever I need them, I'll go get them.